Well, good evening. Good evening. I am so glad you were able to be here. We want to welcome friends, family, and whoever you are. We're glad you're here. <laughs> And we're looking for a great night. But what we want to do is uh, give you a chance to stand for just a second. If you're able to, please stand and we'll sing one verse of Silent Night. <laughs> WFBC Radio, Belvedere, 107.6 FM. We're going live now to our man, I, I mean woman on the street, Kim Andrews. Take it away, Kim. Thanks, Bill. We're live on the street today asking people what Christmas means to them. Excuse me, ma'am. Can't you see I'm busy? Well, <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. Hi. I'm Kim Andrews with WFBC Radio. What's your name? Jack Parsons. Hi, Jack Parsons. Would you mind answering our question of the day? Sure, go ahead. What is Christmas to you? Christmas. It's tradition, you know. Families getting together, presents, little ones getting underfoot, lots of food. <laughs> and my sister Claire. She always brings something special to keep the kids busy. Johnny, this one is for you. Johnny, don't be eating all that candy right now. But I want to eat all now. Okay, if you eat it all right now, there won't be any for later. Okay. <laughs> Now, where did Peggy go? Hmm, I have this really neat game. I need present for her. I wonder where she's at. Peggy, Peggy, Andrea has a present for you. Yeah. Yes, Aunt Claire, Johnny said you wanted me. Yes, Merry Christmas, Peggy. Thank you. Right after dinner, we play. Hmm, I wonder what's keeping your dad. Oh my, I, look at the time. I didn't realize it was so late. And I'm uh, late for dinner. Supper was ready a half hour ago. I gotta go. Bye. And that was Jack Parsons. To him, Christmas is tradition. Hey, Bill, how about a tune or two? Okay, Kim. I'm gonna turn it over to our children's choir. They can sing, C is for Christmas.
Okay, thanks, kids. And now back to our question of the day. Oh, oh, excuse me, ma'am. Hi, I'm Kim Andrews with WFBC Radio. What's your name? I'm Marsha McQueen. Well, hello, Marsha McQueen. Would you mind answering our question of the day? I suppose. Here it is then. Are you ready? Yes. What is Christmas to you? Well, Christmas is really for the kids, you know, with Santa, presents, candy. I don't have any kids personally, but I do remember when I was a kid, I had seven brothers and sisters. So Christmas was a really big deal around our house. All right, kids, settle down. Settle down! Now, Marsha, here's your stocking. Please don't hang up on the mirror. Thank you, Mama. I just smelled Santa. Daddy gave me that job. Did you know she did share water? Yes, we'll see. Okay, Henry, here's yours. Thanks, Mom. Well, Christmas happens everywhere, doesn't it? So, I suppose so. Denny, here's yours. Sure thing, Kim. How about we hear the children's choir sing The Birthday of a King? Thanks, kids. Now back to Kim. Kim? Kim, are you there, Kim? <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, no, I'm here. Just getting a quick cup of coffee. It gets a little bit chilly out here, you know. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to our question of the day. Well, here comes a fine dressed gentleman. Excuse me, sir, hi. What do you want? Just a quick question. What is Christmas? You. Christmas? Who's got time for Christmas? I'm Theodore Whitman Wellington III of Wellington Industries, and to me, Christmas is just another way for people to milk money out of me. Why, just today, I had to turn down the Red Cross, 
Boy Scouts of America, and the Salvation Army. They all wanted money. That's all they want, money. My money. What about the family? You know, Christmas at home. Oh, Christmas at home. Well, mother always goes off to Europe and father's been dead for many years now. I never had time or patience for a wife or kids. They're just a nuisance. <laughs> On Christmas, I'll be at work where everyone else should be. Oh! Well, he certainly doesn't seem to be in the Christmas spirit. Let's find someone else. Oh, Hello, little girl. What's your name? Aren't you going to talk to me? If you do, you could be on the radio. My mom said not to talk to strangers. <laughs> Uh, okay, here's a song that's been requested by a call-in listener. Christ is Christmas. Well, thanks again to all of those who helped provide music for the season. Now let's go back to Kim. Let's see, Bill. So far we have Tradition, Santa, a Grump, and Sorshins. <clears throat> One more ought to do it. Oh, excuse me, sir. Over here, over here. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Kim Andrews with WFBC Radio. What's your name? Yes, I'm Pastor Mike Parker. How can I help you? Would you mind telling all the folks listening at home what Christmas means to you? Why, sure. Christmas is when Jesus, when Jesus was born. Well, there's one we haven't heard yet. Could you explain? Why, sure. You see, Jesus came here from heaven to be born in a lowly stable. At Christmas time, we celebrate his birth. Jesus being born. 
just like we do for your birthdays. But there wouldn't be a Christmas without Jesus' birth. I'm sorry, but I don't understand. You say that he was God's son and he lived in heaven? Yep, that's right. But if all that's true, then why? Why would he do that? Well, you see, God knew that we weren't good enough to go to heaven. We needed someone to pay for our sin. Sin? What sin? Sin is something we're born with. It keeps us away from God. So one, one day, God sent his son here to die for the sins of the whole world. But the neat thing is that Jesus didn't stay dead. Three days later, he arose and went back up to heaven. He's not just there, but we left inside everyone who asked for his forgiveness and love. I'd like to know more. Do you think you could stay for a while and talk? Why, sure, Kim. I like that. Well, Bill, we've heard an awful lot of answers today. It really does make you think. So if you don't mind, I'm going to give this back to you and find some answers of my own. Sure thing, Kim. And now for an important public service announcement. Romans 3 and verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. To believe the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is, is to make it Christmas in your heart.
my true meaning to Christmas. Have you found yours? It's a question that's worth our consideration. Have you made it Christmas in your heart? There's a lot of things that we celebrate. There's traditions and there are a lot of things that we enjoy about this time of year and this season. But the Bible actually tells us what the reason is that should cause us to rejoice. Jesus was born and the heavenly angels announced his birth. And they announced them to the shepherds. Those who were watching their sheep were arrested by the great light and the voice from heaven. And in Luke chapter 2 and verse 10 it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you great tidings of uh, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. There, there is a reason to rejoice that's not just for the shepherds, but for all people. And then he told them, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. The reason that we have to rejoice is because a savior was born. As they just depicted a moment ago, a savior from what? What is it that we need to be delivered from? And as it was spoken, it's because of our sin. Sin separates us from God. The wages of sin is death. And death always is separation. When someone dies, they're separated from us. And when we sin, we are separated from God for all of eternity and must be judged for our sin in a place called hell because we are separated from God and his holiness. But God so loved the world. He loved you, my friend, and he loved everyone here so much that he sent Jesus to die to be the savior. He was the savior, the deliverer by taking our place on the cross. The reason he came was to be the substitute for my sin and for yours. But Jesus did not stay dead. He was buried and he rose again and he is alive. And he's the savior. And the Bible tells us that whoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ would be saved, would be forgiven of their sins. The Holy Spirit, God, would come and live in them. And then they would have a home forever in heaven with God for all of eternity. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful salvation. The angel said, this is why you should rejoice. The Savior has come. The deliverer, but just because the deliverer has come does not mean everyone is saved. I remember when I was a boy, I, it was this time of year. It was in the month of December and I was sitting in a barber shop waiting for my hair to be cut in Milton, Pennsylvania. The barber had the radio on and normally it wasn't stuff that I was interested in listening to, to be quite honest. But on this particular day, I was sitting there and I heard a voice come on the radio. And if there was ever a radio voice, it was this one. It was the voice of Paul Harvey. And Paul Harvey said, and now the rest of the story. And he told a story that day on the radio about the birds. He told him a story of a man who wanted nothing to do with God. He was fine that his wife and children were interested in God, but he wanted nothing to do with God. 
And on Christmas Eve, his wife and children left during a snowstorm to go to a Christmas Eve service at the church down the street. And now the man was left alone in his living room with only his thoughts. And as he sat there, he heard a loud thump on the picture window of his living room. And then another, and then another. And he thought that there must be children out in the street playing with snowballs and throwing them against his window. He got up from the uh, from his chair, walked over to the window, but instead of seeing a group of children, he saw a flock of birds. The flock of birds was out in these sub-zero temperatures, and they were looking for some way in. They could see the light and the warmth of the house. And they were in some ways injuring themselves or even causing their own death by flying into the glass. And he immediately had compassion for the birds. He put on his coat and went out into the snow. And it was freezing cold. And he looked around and he saw these birds and he had an idea. His daughter had a little pony and they had a little barn and so he thought, I'm going to open the doors to the barn and turn the light on. And maybe the birds will be attracted from the darkness and go into the light. But they didn't. Instead of going to the light, they refused the light and they stayed in the dark, in the cold. So he went into his house and he found some breadcrumbs and he threw them to them. And initially they, they picked at them and he tried to make a little trail over to the barn he thought, if I can only get you to the barn, you'll have shelter. But they would not follow him. He tried shooing the birds, but again, they only flew up and then came around and landed again in his yard. Refusing to go into safety. And he thought to himself, they just don't trust me. If I would become a bird, maybe they would trust me. And then the church bells rang. And the man was arrested with the thought, that's what God did for me. We are hopelessly lost in our sin. There is nothing that we can do to save ourselves. Being religious doesn't take us to heaven. It, it, being a good person doesn't save us from our sins. Matter of fact, it's no different than the bird trying to fly into the window. It does nothing to provide us the salvation that we need. But Jesus left the glories of heaven. He left the, the warmth and the light of the glory and came to earth to our need. And he did. He clothed himself with our humanity. And he provided for us a way of salvation. He died in our place. Now, whoever trusts him will be saved as the bird who must trust the one who is providing deliverance. The only way that we are delivered is by trusting the deliverer, the Lord Jesus. Would you depend on Jesus to do for you what you can't do for yourself? Would you call out to God tonight in prayer? Admit to God that you're a sinner. That you deserve to be separated from him and judged for your sins. Believe that he died not just on a cross, not just for others, but that he died for you. And then call on him to be your savior. Will you do that? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me tonight? I'd like to ask you this question. Have you ever made it Christmas in your heart? What is Christmas to you? Is it just another holiday? Or is it the day that you celebrate and thank God that he came to deliver you? I wonder how many are here tonight that would just raise their hand with no one else looking around and just say, Pastor, I know that if I were to die tonight, I know I would go to heaven because for no other reason but that I trusted Jesus to be my savior. And if that's your testimony, would you just raise up your hand all over the auditorium tonight? Thank you. What a great show of hands.
you may put them down. I wonder if there's someone here tonight that would say, you know, Pastor, I've never trusted Jesus as my Savior, but I sure would like to do that tonight. Here's what I'd like you to do. Would you also just raise up your hand and hold it up high enough and long enough that I can see it? I won't embarrass you. I won't call you out. But is there somebody here that would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I need to be saved. I want to know Jesus as my Savior. I want to know that my sins are forgiven, that heaven is my home. Would you just hold up your hand high enough and long enough that I can see it? Is there anybody like that? Yes, I see that hand. Thank you. You may put it down. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. And yes, sir, I see your hand. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Father, you've seen the hands of those who raised them tonight, realizing that they need you. Lord, I pray that you'd help them to make the right decision. Now, I want to tell you with your heads bowed and eyes closed, you can make that decision right now. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, you don't have to pray out loud. But would you right now pray and say, dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve to die and be judged for my sins. But Lord Jesus, I believe that when you died, you died for me. And that you were buried and I believe you rose again. And I'm asking you right now, would you please forgive me of my sins and be my savior? The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you ask the Lord Jesus to do that right now, he did it, my friend. He saved you. He's given you eternal life. In just a moment, I'm going to end in prayer. And after the, everyone is dismissed, I'm going to be standing down front here, right in front of the platform. And if you just prayed that prayer to receive Jesus as your Savior... Would you come and greet me and just let me know the decision you made tonight? I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to encourage you. If you just prayed to ask the Lord to be your Savior from your sin, would you see me right after this is dismissed so that I have a chance to just encourage you tonight? Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for the hard work of everybody involved tonight but lord we thank you most of all that we have a reason to be here tonight and that reason is you thank you lord jesus for coming and for being the savior there is a reason to rejoice this time of year and not this time of year only but to always rejoice in the lord for you are good and you are our deliverer. For those of us who know you as Savior, may we not go through this season without truly rejoicing in you. And Lord, for those who just prayed tonight, I pray that they would be encouraged and strengthened in knowing you. And Lord, if there's somebody here tonight who still needs to trust Jesus to be their Savior, I pray that they would also see me or someone else here who loves them, that we can show them from the Bible how they can be saved. In Jesus' name, amen.